My name is Mutoko Ndlovu, and that's how you spell my name. And today I come with you with a Honey Award. Yes, we are presenting Honey today to the Pathfinders, to the adventurers, and that's what Honey looks like. And um, when you get your uh, badges to put on your sash, that's what you will get. So I am so excited that uh, all of you are here and want to learn a little bit more about honey. Honey is something that I really, really love because I grew up with my grandfather who used to uh, be a beekeeper. And each time every now and then, we would have some lovely raw honey. Uh, and so I'm really, really excited for these boys and girls. So um, there we go. What are we going to learn today? So I'm hoping that by the end of our time together, this session, uh, you will learn um, where honey comes from, how the bees make honey. Uh, you'll understand a few terms. What is a super, an extractor, nectar, pollen. So all those are big words that uh, by the end of this, uh, you will definitely know them because I will teach you and tell you what it is. We will understand what is the role of a beekeeper. What does a beekeeper do? And I will be asking you to, um, for the next few weeks to make some crafts, get busy after school on a Sunday, after Saturday afternoon, make uh, some crafts. You can make a beehive, you can make a honeycomb, uh, you can make a flower, or you can choose, you can choose what you make. And then, uh, you're going to ask mom or dad or uncle or auntie to help you go into a shop and buy some different types of honey. And you can taste at least minimum of three flavors of honey. Oh, and, so, um, and so are we going to taste any honey today? Well, um, if you stay on, we'll wait and see if we're going to have any honey. We okay. might have some few uh, uh, surprises along the way. But let's okay. wait and see. All right. And so, boys and girls, I would need you to uh, send your uh, pictures to Pastor Dayan and tell him which type of honey that you tasted and why you liked it. And uh, also, we're going to be looking at uh, the Bible. I hope that you brought your Bibles. And so I've got a request to make. Each time I say, draw your sword, I want you to take out your Bible and wait for the instruction of which verse we're going to go to. And anyone who gets the verse first, just type in the chat and let me know you've got it. So you hear the, the word, draw your sword, draw your sword, and we can go to that Bible verse. Is that okay? Good. Right, I want to ask you a question, boys and girls. There we go. So I will be asking you some questions every now and then along the way as we go. What do you think? Can we eat honey? Or do we use honey for bathing? Or what do we use honey for? Can you eat it? Okay, so boys and girls, some guys are already on the ball and uh, we want to give a chance to those who are joining us from Facebook as well. Uh, <clears throat> to tell us uh, their thoughts about this. And so guys, just type in on the comments on Facebook and on the chat here. Uh, and someone says it's good for coughs. Someone oh, said baking, we've got um, eating. And uh, someone simply said, yes, you can eat yes, uh, you can. honey. And it's used as remedies, um, love, joy, and love divine. Great, great. I think We've it's got some used very... for um, uh, remedies. Is that true, Auntie? Well, uh, I think so. Uh, we, we already have some little doctors and physicians out there, I can see, who already uh, have learned so much about honey. Right, there we go. We, got, we get answers from the Bible, isn't it? Yes, because God has made all these things for us. So draw your sword, boys and girls and go to Proverbs 24, verses 13. Let's see who will be first to get to Proverbs. Is Proverbs in the Old Testament? Is it in the New Testament? 
where is Proverbs in the Bible? Let us see who's going to type in first. If you've got it, just say, Ooh, I think got it. got it first, um, at least here on, uh, on Zoom. Aaron tells us he's got it. He's got it. Aaron, if you, read, if you read with me, it says, in my Bible, it says, my child eat honey, for it is good, and the honeycomb is sweet to the taste. And guess what? Bees make honey to feed on it as well. That's their food too. So yes, we can eat honey. It's very, very tasty. Like the Bible says, it's very sweet. Right. Okay, let us go. There is a honey promise in the Bible. So draw your sword. Let us see if we can find a promise about honey in the Bible. So hold your sword. Let us go to Exodus 3 verse 8. Let us see those uh, hands moving quite quick. Are we going to the oh, New oh. Testament? Are we going to the Old Testament? These Where guys is are Exodus? very fast. Romeo, preacher Romeo, Nozuelo, Nozuelo and uh, Jason uh, and Geraldine, all these guys have got it, auntie. Oh, they've got it already. So read with me. My Bible says the promise in the Bible when the children of Israel were moving out of Egypt. The Bible says, so I have come down to rescue them from power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile, spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey the land where the canaanites the hittites the amorites the perizzites the hivites and the jebusites now live so can you imagine uh these uh, uh israelites are in egypt and god is giving them a promise that you know what do not worry you are going to be eating honey if you go to canaan so honey must be very very special uh, if it is mentioned this way. So there we go. What do we have there? So I have a question again there for you. Like I said, I would like to interact with these boys and girls. I would like you to tell me where does honey come from? Where does honey come from? Does it come from okay. some worms in the garden? <clears throat> okay, guys, have you been listening? Let's hear your answers. Let's just wait for the guys on Facebook. It's either my Facebook is not connecting well because I can't seem to see a single comment. So guys, if you're on Facebook, just send a hi to us so that we can get the comments uh, running uh, and we can uh, be able to uh, get your comments and share them with the other guys who are on Zoom. Okay, so anybody... Anyone on Zoom knows where honey comes from? Uh, when it comes to Facebook, uh, we have uh, about 50 people watching at the moment. Uh, and they're sending and they're saying the honey is coming from the bees, from the Facebook. I don't know. From the bees. Uh, Pasanja, you have a lot of comments in the chat section of the Zoom as well. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I can't seem to... All right, so there's a bit of a problem. Yes, we go. Here, thank you, Pastor Dan, for keeping me connected with those guys. So I'll be relying on you, if that's okay. And um, we've got some answers here. Uh, uh, the answer the same as the one I have on screen. Honey comes yes. from the hard work of bees. Yes. The bees really have to work hard, just like mommy and daddy. When they wake up and they go to work, guess what? The bees also wake up and they're out and they're working to make honey. Well, and they make so says, much honey. Okay. Sorry, Auntie, uh, but someone is saying something here. I need to confirm if this is true. Someone has said pollen. Someone has said the honeycomb. And then someone is saying it comes from Zimbabwe. Oh, yes. The best honey comes from Zimbabwe. I agree with that person. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I just needed to make sure this is uh, true information that is being shared here. Yes. So uh, the bees will go out to work and they make a lot of honey. So those bees in Zimbabwe... They go out into the forest and they make loads and loads of honey. So, according to Draw Your Sword, 
according to Matthew chapter 3, verses 4, who ate locusts and honey while out preaching. So draw your sword and go to Matthew. Go to Matthew chapters 3 and verses 4. Let us see those little hands uh, moving pretty fast. Are you going to the Old Testament? Are you going to the New Testament? Where is Matthew? Okay, so Pastor Dan, could you just tell us what the guys on uh, Facebook are saying? Let's just give them a little time so that they can catch up and then uh, we'll hear from Pastor Dan uh, what those guys um, could be saying right okay. now. We have uh, answers from the Facebook here. We have John the Baptist as, as the person who uh, was eating uh, honey and locusts. Right. Hmm. Is that true, Auntie? Let us see if it's true. Yes, it is true. Matthew 3 verse 4 says, John's clothes were woven from coarse camel. He wore leather belt around his waist. And for food, he ate locusts and wild honey. So that is very true, boys and girls. Let us see. Let us go into how do the bees make honey? How do they make it? So when they go out and they work, do they get their uh, pen and paper and they take some notes and then they uh, get some ingredients, they pass through the shop, or do they go to Tesco's or Asda's and they buy their ingredients and then they come back to, to their home and they make honey? How do they make it? Okay, so as we move on to answer those questions with Auntie, um, we want to remind you guys, we've got the worksheet which can be found on the BUC website uh, for the E uh, Awards uh, for the Adventurers. So make sure you've got your uh, worksheets. Uh, it's good that you complete that worksheet that's been put up there for you. So you've got that appearing uh, on the screen and you can go straight to it. So it's right showing on the chat right now. You can click on it if you did not uh, get the um, worksheet. Okay, thank you, Auntie. Right. So step number one, what the bees do is the, they go out, and not all the bees go out. Only the worker bees, those who are working very hard, and another name for them, we are calling them a forager. So the foragers, they fly, they buzz, 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 and they go out. They go out into the different uh, flowers and they use their um, little beak that looks like a straw and they suck up uh, the nectar and they swallow it. And then it goes, that nectar goes into the honey stomach, right? So step number two, so once they've swallowed and that nectar is in the honey stomach, they, when their stomachs are full, when they're out there, they then fly back into their home and their home is called a beehive, a hive, or sometimes they make a nest and they give uh, that nectar that they have collected from the flowers uh, to the other bees that have been left in the uh, beehive. And these type of bees, they are called processor bees because these ones are then going to be uh, doing some things. They, they, we are going to look at the stages later on, what these bees do to make the honey. So step number one, they go out, they collect the nectar, they put that nectar into the honey stomach. And the honey stomach, by the way, is different from the food stomach. So when their stomach is full now, they come back to the hive and they give the nectar to the process of bees. So you can see on my picture there, I have those bees coming back to their hive to give to the process of bees. I think I just saw one bee with a honey stomach. Oh. It, looks, it looks just like honey. <laughs> that stomach is very full, isn't it? Yeah. Go. So there we go. The honey stomach is different from the food stomach. So that's a picture there of a, a bee. Uh, that's the inside, just an outline of a bee. So you have the, the stomach, the food stomach is there. And then you have the honey stomach where the nectar is stored. But what does this honey stomach do in the process when the bee is flying back to the beehive? Okay, let us see. We've got some science here that takes place. 
okay? So it's a little bit of a big word there. The honey stomach is full of these enzymes and these enzymes, are, we can explain them as very special proteins that help to break down or to convert that nectar into honey, okay? So this happens in, the, in that stomach in the meantime. So, so how okay. does the nectar know which stomach to go to, um, um, Antim Togo? Right. So how does the know, how does the honey know which stomach to go to? So and the, then, yeah. yes, the, the bee itself has a way of sending the nectar into the, so that's amazing because that's how God made uh, the bees, that they are actually able to differentiate from the food mm. they eat and the nectar that they need to go and pass on to the other bees. So it's amazing how God made these little creatures. I wish I had a honey stomach. Oh, that's for right. enjoying honey. Okay. Maybe if you pray harder, God may give you a honey stomach. Okay. So uh, we are talking about nectar and a hive. But what is nectar? You know, what is this nectar that they pick? So if I go out there and I look at my flowers in the garden, can I be able to see nectar? What is it? Okay. Let me see if the boys and girls know what nectar is. Have you already learned this from school? Or have you already learned this from home? What is nectar? Can somebody tell me? Okay, Let's see in so the chat. guys, there's a question for us here. What is nectar? What is nectar? And we are beginning to get some answers, but, 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 let's remember our guys who are on Facebook. So, uncle, tell us, what is nectar? Now, uncle, please don't Google it. You just need to read what the guys are saying on Facebook, please. Uh, we are still waiting for the answers as the delay is there. Okay, uh, so there is more answers. Now, while we are waiting, Uncle, I I'm just excited with what we're doing because I have a surprise for Antim Togo. Now, boys and girls, do you want to... Um, okay, the answers are coming in. So maybe let me hold on with my surprise because these answers are so clever. These boys and girls are so clever. Okay, Uncle, you tell us first before I read all this amazing answers that we're getting here. Well, the nectar, nectar comes from the flowers, they're saying. Nectar is, a, 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 it's like a pollen from the flowers, is main main summary of, of the answers. What I have hey. here is it's a sweet liquid from flowers. Wow. Brilliant. It I is, love those answers. And it is found in flowers. And uh, somebody has already told us what a hive is. Okay, good. It's good. a bee's home. It's a and bee's it's home. So sweet uh, for the bees. And uh, nectar is something from inside a flower. Nectar is from the yellow parts of um, a flower. And somebody has said something interesting here that the, the bees visit 2,000 flowers to make a tablespoon of honey. Mm, that's very interesting. Yes, that is so true. They have to visit uh, so many flowers to just make a little, a little honey. So there we go. You're right, boys and girls. Nectar is that sugary part of the flower. There is a liquid inside uh, the flower, which is very, very rich in sugar, and it tastes very sweet. So the bees go out and they drink uh, that nectar or swallow that nectar. And the hive, you're very right, is a home for the bees. So the bees need somewhere to live uh, or to place their nest on. And so they need uh, that which we call it a hive. So let us move on. Step number three. So the bees, the, f the female bees, the foragers have gone out and they have spent so much time outdoors, uh, moving from flower to flower, plant to plant, uh, sucking up all that nectar and they have come back, they've given that nectar to the other processor bees that are in the hive. And so step number three, what do you think is happening there? I see two bees uh, head to head and I'm just wondering what they are doing. That is the step number three. What are those bees doing? And uh. they pass that nectar from bee to bee, okay? So uh, the nectar that is from that honey stomach, they pass it from one bee to the other and to the other. Um, 
and when they are doing that, <coughs> when they are doing that, uh, some uh, liquid is lost, some water moisture is lost in that process, which is very good because they don't want too much water. They want to uh, continue to make honey because honey is thick. It is very uh, little water. And so, 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 so uh, Auntie, it's just for me to understand this. When their faces are coming together, is um, what exactly are they using to pass this um, nectar to the from one bee to the other? So, uh, you know, the bees have uh, the little straws. Well, we call them. I call them straws for you to understand it better. What they use. Uh, to suck up the nectar. So that's what they use to pass from one bee to the other. It's as if they are sucking up from, from a flower. So they okay. suck from each other, yes. This must be the sweetest kiss uh, that uh, the bees have ever, that nature has ever shown us. Passing right. up that lovely uh, liquid. Let me share with you, Auntie, uh, somebody here has said, um, it's so sweet, I like this. It's so sweet to trust bees to make honey. I hope you oh, get the joke. Yes. Uh, it actually says that if you get the joke. It's so sweet to trust bees to make honey. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> Good. So um, we, we, we have a honeycomb. So when the bees are uh, back to the hive and they're passing this uh, nectar to one from the other, uh, they place it in a honeycomb. Okay, so this is what a honeycomb looks like. And um, what do you think that is? It is a, um, a wax, we call those cells. Can you see these little holes that you can see in there? We call them cells. Uh, they are built by the bees um, to store the nectar, to store the honey, to store pollen, to store lover and to store what we call bee bread, but we are going to learn that as we go. So this is what a honeycomb looks like, okay? Okay, so, as you so um, Auntie, just to keep in touch with the guys who are on Facebook, as we've just gone over halfway through your presentation, um, uh, Pastor Dayan? Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, any of the comments coming in from uh, Facebook? Yeah, no, no, everything is going good and they're enjoying the presentation and they're giving the right answers as uh, Mtoko is, is presenting. Okay, uh, great. So I think that uh, these boys and girls already know so much about bees. So I've highlighted that word pollen there. Okay, so that's another big word that we're going to be learning uh, today. And so what is pollen? So can I ask you to tell me, uh, I already heard some saying, oh, honey is made from pollen. Um, what is it? What does it look like? Okay, guys, so give us those answers. What does pollen look like? What is pollen and what does it actually look like? Okay, we'll uh, start off here on uh, Zoom for now. Uh, it's a sticky substance. Uh, somebody said it's like dust, uh, the middle of a flower. Bees cover themselves in them. It's the inside part of a flower. Are all these correct? How, how do these boys and girls know all this stuff? Well, you know what? In the British Union Conference and um, uh, in these clubs, I think that the club directors are working so hard already to teach these boys and girls. So I think they will already deserve to be given these certificates before I even finish. Yeah, uh, so, so pollen is the powder that is from the flower. That's from Dio Modo. I hope I pronounced that uh, uh, correctly. Pollen is dusty powder that comes to bees so they can pass it on to another plant. Okay. I really like that. I really like that because that's exactly what pollen is. It is a dusty, fine powder that is produced by certain plants, you know, when uh, they reproduce. So in the spring, in the summer, and sometimes in the fall, um, you know, this uh, dusty, fine powder is released into the air and then it's picked up by the wind 
which is then passes it on to another plant. So it is a way of um, fertilization, you know, so that uh, the other plants can continue to produce seeds. So as you know that um, reproduction happens when uh, male and female meet, so it's the same with plants. We have male and female, so the pollen is passed from you know one plant to the other, and then it produces more seeds, and that's how we have more flowers. That's how we have more plants uh, because of this. And bees and other insects they actually help with uh, what we call pollination. So when the bee go from plant to plant, from flower to flower, they carry with them this pollen and they transfer it to uh, the other plants. And then you have more plants the following spring. Okay, good. So that means the bees don't just only do one job of making honey, but they also uh, help with um, pollination. I've Step just number four. Here, Auntie. Um, uh, people get hay fever from pollen, is that correct? I think so. A lot of people, people get hay fever from pollen and that's why they would go to the doctor or they'd go to the pharmacy and they get some hay fever liquid that can help them. And sometimes they have some other plants as well that help with hay fever. So uh, we continue with honey. Step number four, uh, what do they do then from that? What do the bees do in the process of making honey? Step number four, so like I said before, that nectar that they have put in the um, honeycomb has lots of water. So when the bees are passing the nectar from one to the other, in that process of passing uh, one to the other, some water is lost and we call that process evaporation. When you know the water just disappears into the uh, thin air, and um, we are left with little water in the, uh, in the nectar. And so what the other thing they do, which I find really interesting is they, they fan the honeycomb, you know, so they flap their wings really hard. They work so hard and they flap their wings and as they flap their wings, it helps to reduce the water content. Because I think that you boys and girls, you, so some of you at least, who may have had honey, honey is quite thick, isn't it? And um, it's very, very rich as well. So there's very little water. So that's, what, that's why they do this process. They are wanting to reduce the water content in that nectar so that they can be left with a thick liquid that we then call honey. So by flapping their wings, they can get rid of the excess water that's not needed for the making of honey. That is correct, Pastor Andrew. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That is cool. And I have got a fact for the boys and girls. Guess what? I find this really interesting about bees. Guess what? Only the female bees goes out to work. But what are the males doing? I think it's like in my house, you know, I'm always working. And the boys and girls... Oh my. <laughs> Well, you know what? Us women, we work very hard, don't we? So it's the bees, they go out and they work very hard. But the males, uh, they just stay around and they, they are flying around, you know, and they're just enjoying uh, the I don't think thing. that is true, boys and girls. Do you agree with auntie? Uh, so tell me, boys, do, do your daddies just sit home and do nothing? Mm, I don't think so. Oh, they're telling me, Auntie, that no, no, no. No, oh, no, oh, no. Okay. Is that not we'll true? Just pass over the one who said, Yep. All we'll right, all right. And most of okay. them are saying, No. Well, <laughs> that, that is right. No, that, that is because humans are not bees. So, but in bees' family, the females go out to work. But the, the, the males, they have a job too. And the males, they are called drones. They have a job to, and their job is to obviously reproduce. They mate with the queen bee and they make more babies. That's how we have more bees. So they have a, their own job as well, right? Good. Good <laughs> I stuff. see Pastor Dan uh, laughing there. <laughs> so, yes, I'm a little bit laughing because 
I'm following the comments online. And if somebody said, yes, in my house, my mom works the hardest. Uh, so <laughs> there, there might be some daddies there like uh, that need to fix themselves up after this presentation. <laughs> <laughs> that is wow. okay. Told off. Let us move on with our honey and uh, and leave the drones on the side. Okay. So step number five. So now where are we in uh, in the in the in the honey making process? Uh, the water content is reduced. So most of the water has evaporated, and uh, it gets to a stage where the bees, they assess and they taste the liquid that is in the honeycomb and they figure out whether is this ready or not. You know, just like when mommy or daddy are cooking, you know, you have to cook and cook and then you can get to a point where you taste your flavors. And what I do is I put a little in my hand and then I taste and, uh, and see if, you know, my salt is enough and if my spices are all blending in well and I'm feeling, yes, this is yummy and it's ready to, for my family to eat. So the bees do the same, you know, uh, they taste uh, that, bee, that, that honey and um, they get to a point where they are satisfied and they're saying, yes, this honey is ready for us to give to our um, family and also to share with the humans because the bees, they actually make so much honey that they don't use all of it. So that is why the humans will go out and then they go out and harvest. So what they do, which is very clever, is they um, put all that honey in the honeycomb and they want to keep it and they want to keep it clean. So they seal uh, the honey inside the honeycomb. And can you see on that picture, you've got that sealant there, that white uh, creamy top bit at the top, which is the wax um, sealing all the honey inside so that it doesn't get lost. I think this is very clever of the bees to do this. Oh, okay. yes, I think so, too. And um, you, um, your time is, um, is uh, interesting, Auntie. So, yes, we look forward to your following steps. Okay, and I so have the surprise, Auntie. I have the surprise that is just waiting for the next step. Okay. What is that surprise? I am waiting. So, as we move on to the uh, next step, let us see what's happening before uh while uncle nj is showing me a surprise look what is he doing let us see <laughs> you may want to just close your uh presentation one second because i have this to surprise you with oh right there you go so can 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 i just uh, i need to pin my video look at that oh oops uh, I need to adjust it uh, just a little, boys and girls. There you go. I got this. I made this, boys and girls, especially for this particular program. Right. So that, that is exciting. Reminded of the hard work that the bees do and the hard work that what we are about to learn about. And this is for when we are harvesting the honey. And I hope Auntie is about to tell us this. And so it was specially made for you or with you and this presentation in mind, Auntie. Thank oh, you. Oh, that is exciting surprise. I'm very surprised to see that. You must have worked very hard to make that. This is the point, out. Auntie, that uh, some daddies work so hard as well, you know, just <laughs> to make it so beautiful for the boys and girls out there. Well, the we are so thankful. We are so thankful for daddies like you. <laughs> thank you i get my brownie points yes you've got them you've earned them there you go so uh pastor nj there is just shown us something quite similar to this and who is that man what is he doing what is he why is he dressed like that okay that auntie, is... so you now need to go back to sharing your screen and oh, remember right. to optimize the videos as well which you will be showing i believe all right okay Sorry for that, but I was so excited, guys, uh, because um, making this um, uh, a mask or this uh, uh, the part of a bee suit, oh, it took me a lot of time, but I really wanted to do it uh, because I knew Auntie uh, or my wife, who I call Honey, by the way, uh, was going to be doing the presentation. But back okay. to you now. 
All right. Okay. Thank you so much for that, Pastor NJ. And that is what we have. Can you all see the man in the picture? He is wearing a bee suit uh, and he is a beekeeper. So he's dressed like that because he is a man who looks after bees and he cares for bees. Okay. What is his role? The role of a beekeeper, one, it is to provide home for the bees. So those beehives that you are telling me about, that is a home for the bees, that is exactly one of the roles of a beekeeper. Can you see a beehive there? Okay. And another word that you have to learn for this award is this big word uh, on uh, the bottom right, which is super. And what is a super? Super is just that uh, box there that they make and there's all those trays or um, inside and the trays are the ones which uh, the bees will come and use to make their honeycomb inside. So that is a honey super. But um, the, the honey super is made into maybe small or medium because if they make it too large, it may be too difficult to carry. So um, because the, the honey is very heavy, and so you have to make it shallow and maybe small or medium so you can be able to carry it around, okay? So that's one thing when your club directors are asking you, what is a super? You are going to tell them that it's another home for the bees and it is where they put the trays and uh, the bees would come and uh, make the honeycomb and, and the honey. Okay, so I went around the world and I was trying to see, um, do people make the same beehives, you know, for the bees? Uh, and I discovered that there is different kinds of beehives. And so there we go, look at another one. That's one beehive that in other parts of the world they make. And there's another one. And like I told you, my grandfather used to keep bees. And the one on the bottom left hand, the one on the tree, is the one that I grew up knowing. My grandfather would go and carve a bark of a tree and then he'd close it on either side and make a hole and he's made a home for the bees. And when it's ready, he will then put the, um, this uh, beehive down and he will harvest the, bee, the, the honey and we can enjoy it. And look at the other different ones. Look at that. That one I learned is mainly from Uganda. The Ugandans uh, use that type of a beehive. And look at this one. I thought this one, it looked like a barbecue, uh, but you know, it's for the bees. And look at this one. That is a natural one, you know? Uh, in some of the trees, you've got uh, a hole in the tree and the bees just think, oh, we've got a home for ourselves. Look at that one. Same, similar to the one on the uh, top, bottom right. And then we have that one. Isn't that interesting that we have all these different types of uh, homes for the bees? I must and ask you this, uh, Auntie. Um, uh, so Nozuelo uh, is asking this question. Do bees have their own bedrooms or do they sleep together? <laughs> ah, that is an interesting question. I think that the bees have a nice big bedroom uh, that they share, you know? Um, it teaches us something there that, you know what? Uh, the space is enough for all of us because there's so many bees, but they can share this space and they're not pushing each other, but they love being together because they work together all the time. And so, Jeremiah was born in Uganda, so he was so happy to see uh, one of the hives that, um, uh, that are, are native to uh, Uganda. Oh, that is very good. I'm happy for you. And when I was traveling in Turkey recently, and we were driving along, we saw this beekeeper. Look at all those beehives that he has on top of a hill. Uh, actually, it's almost like a mountain. Uh, so we spotted him and we're like, wow, look at that. He was busy looking after his, uh, his bees. And um, the beekeeper, they keep obviously honey um, bees to make food for the bees. And they also raise the queen bees uh, to sell to other farmers as well. And sometimes uh, they sell that honey for people or to supermarkets uh, for, for, for us to eat, okay? 
And the beekeepers also, they use uh, honey, sorry, they use honeybees to provide pollination to fruit and vegetable growers because if there's no bees, there's no fruits, you know, like mm. we said, um, you know, we need the bees on all these other insects that help with the pollination process. And you know what? Some people keep bees just because they love bees. As a hobby, they're just fascinated by the process of, uh, you know, honey making and they just love it. And they also just want to take part in the care of the environment. So they also, they just make these beehives so that uh, the bees can have a home um, to, to stay. I'm going to show you a little video. Oh, uh, that guy looks familiar. Mm. <laughs> and in this little video, let me see if I can, um, I'll stop sharing for, for a while and I will try and see if I can. I think you may just optimize. be about able to show one of your two videos, Auntie. Uh, so you may want to choose um, just uh, in the interest of uh, time. Um, but yes, we're looking forward to seeing the video. Uh, uh, Pastor Dan, um what, what what did you think of my 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 uh uh my bee suit here and what did the very beautiful. think of my bee suit very beautiful i i'm worried that you might have a second job which is not good you know that <laughs> oh, okay 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 okay. Oh, okay 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 now i think that in the interest of time we'll pass uh pastor mj and his uh bee suit and we oh, will we'll give uh, you time <laughs> hunty to uh, do what you are doing but it looks like you're ready all right, I am ready. So let us see. Um... Eating, Yanni. Oh, sorry about that. We'll pass that one because of time. Um, and we will go to, let's draw our swords and see if boys and girls like honey. What happens to you if you eat honey? Proverbs 25, verse Doko, 16. Uh, if it's possible, I think we'll find time for that video. So please to show it because this will give a good perspective to young people oh how this all looks like so okay. we would love to see first okay, and the second video honey. uncle is thinking of so there's two videos by the way uncle so okay okay all right yeah the one that shows more of the process is the second one that's the one she's going okay to. okay sounds good sorry about that okay that's okay it. so we will we will go there so let's draw a sword it's time for draw your sword Proverbs 25, verse 16 and 27. Let us draw our sword and go to those verses. Let's see what they have to say. If you like eating honey, right? In my Bible here, it says, verses 16. I and hope you found it. Good. Yes, I've got it, auntie. Good. My Bible tells me that don't eat too much honey. It will make you sick. And verses 27, it says, it's not good to eat too much honey and it's not good to seek honors. Yes, the Bible tells us while it's good to eat honey, it's not good to eat too much of it. But most importantly, boys and girls, do not give honey to children under one year old. They can get very ill with a disease called botulism. And I repeat, do not give honey to anyone under 12 months because they can get very, very ill. And for you as well, don't eat too much honey. Right, okay, let's move on. Okay. Now, how, how do these uh, beekeepers uh, harvest the honey? How do they do it? Let's see that. Um, they collect the honeycomb like that they collect the tray first from the honeycomb just like that and they also scrape the wax at the top just like that um, and once they do that they uh, then put these frames into an extractor extractor is a big word but what is it let's see what the extractor looks like there it is it is a big container like that and it's got trays inside that will um, sieve the honey and will strain the honey. So the wax in the comb remains in the sieve and the uh, honey 
comes out, okay? And so what happens once uh, the extractor has removed that honey? So the honey is then cleaned again because sometimes it has some um, extra small particles in it. And so uh, sometimes some beekeepers will at this point heat the honey on um, a hob or you know, in their big uh, pots uh, so that they ca it can make the cleaning process easier. And then after cleaning the honey, they then place it in the jars and they sell it to the shops or you can go and buy them from the beekeepers, okay? And then at that point, your honey is ready to eat. Now, here is a video that is very, very exciting to see the whole process of what I was talking about, okay? So I will play this video now so that you can see how the honey is extracted or how it is removed from the honeycomb to uh, the jars that you eat. So please pardon me because you are going to see uh, a certain pastor uh, getting very excited here about, um, about eating honey. So let's see this pastor here. All the honey is made. Wow. Mm. That's an excited pastor's wife right here. Okay. This is all honey. Mm. Look. Wow. Look. Proper honey. Ah. Mmm. <laughs> and then I put it here. Mm -hmm. And then it goes in there. And try it in there. And then here. And those tins. Mm. How is your honey? Beautiful. Lovely. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Folks. Lira? This is honey. Uh, oh, and Tim Togo. You're making us feel hungry now. Mm. Right. Okay. So there is the pasta having honey. He was having some honey there in Turkey. And we've got different types of honey or rather different forms of honey. Is sometimes uh, set like that, uh, which is uh, very hard. Or sometimes it's in a comb or sometimes it's uh, crystallized just like that. Okay. Uh, and also sometimes it comes as a liquid or some people like it whipped just like that, okay? And also, um, what makes honey so different in terms of how they look? Look at all those different types of honey. We've got the clear ones, a little bit brown, a bit amber, a bit darker. What makes them uh, all those different colors when they come from the same bees? Well, it is because of the different flowers so the flowers where the nectar is from makes the honey a different color. So, and sometimes also the pollen in the honey is traced to the country where it comes from. And also honey colors are different because uh, you know, of the different flowers and the different plants that they come from. Ranging from water white, that's what they call it. Can you see? Almost like water all the way to very dark amber. Those are the different colors of honey, okay? And we also have the different types, okay? We have the blended honeys where they mix two different honeys from a different flowers or they mix them according to color. Or we also have polyfloral honeys, which is from uh, wild flowers, okay? And then there we go, uh, polyfloral honeys. We have um, monofloral honey, mono meaning one which means it's a honey coming from just one type of flower, like that. If it just takes from that one type of flower, then we call that a monofloral honey. We also have honey from honeydew. Yes, not all honey comes from uh, nectar, but honey also comes from honeydew, and honeydew is uh, taken from uh, these aphids. These are aphids, these are sap-sucking insects that uh, produce 
uh, this liquid here that we call honeydew. So then the bees will go and pick up that honeydew and then they come and make honey. Okay, so in your award, uh, I will be asking you to taste at least three different flavors. So I have chosen my three flavors, which are heather honey, and this one, I actually um, have it here, I will show you later on. And uh, this is what it looks like. It's made from the heathers, which are native to Scotland. And then we have manuka honey, which is also uh, a very tasty uh, uh, honey, and it's very, very medicinal, meaning it's very good for coughs, like the other one told us, uh, very good for any diseases. And then we also have acacia honey, which is a very popular one. Uh, that's how it looks like, okay? There we go, heather honey is native to Scotland, like I told you. That flower, you'll find it in the hills of Scotland. Look at that. And uh, it is native to Scotland. It is one of the strongest uh, honeys. It's got an aftertaste. Sometimes they use it for meat dishes, for marinating. It is extra thick and it also amber in color. Look at me there uh, amongst the heathers trekking the hills of Scotland. Okay. Wow. Looks very good, Auntie. But I'm afraid your time has come up, Auntie, and we are a little over your time. So I would just allow, if that's okay, Auntie, for you to go to your last bit, because boys and girls, remember, you can find this presentation online and uh, you've got the workbooks that are online as well. But Auntie may have something else that she wants to just wrap up with um having showed us the i mean the, the honey that's more important for you to show you've shown the one the heather honey uh the one from scotland and so um do you have something else to say as you wrap up auntie yes uh i think i might uh, wrap up with um uh just these maybe three slides this one uh other things that the bees make is propolis uh bee bread, they make beeswax, they make royal jelly. That is something that you can go and, uh, and, 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 and read about. Uh, it's very good. And um, I will go to uh, write some cool facts about honey that uh, it is um, very good for helping with diseases and also that it never spoils and that there is more than 300 types of honeys uh, in the world. So, uh, and it is very good for your hair. So boys and girls, eat uh, some honey, use it to uh, condition your hair. And also, this is a very important bit that um, you can help save the honeys, you know, the honey bees, really. You can help them by um, planting some gardens uh, that attract the bees. And also, you can also make this what we call the bee bath, so the bees can come and drink some water. So just carry and get a little bowl, fill it with water, put some stones so that the bees can come and, uh, and have some water and just put it in your garden. And also, you can support the local beekeepers so that they can uh, continue to um, look after the honey. Okay? And so... Um, we will go also to the homework, which is the, also the very important bit, because uh, without this, you will not be able to get your award. So you need to be able to at least make some of these things. Make at least two of these, okay? Um, make at least two of these. You can choose which ones you want to make. If you want to make a beehive, or you want to make a honeycomb, or you want to make a um, bee or a flower, okay? Also, you can choose from these ones. You can make a, a flower, you can make a bee bath, you can make your own bee, okay? And then, or this one, you can make your own um, uh, uh, beehive, you can make your own uh, honeycomb. This is uh, just ideas. Uh, you can just use a bubble wrap and paint it, or you can just use pasta to make your honeycomb. Okay, okay, Auntie, can we see yours? Can you see what you've made and we'll close it with that one? Yes, this is the end, Pasta. It's just, uh, this is the end. So I will stop sharing 
and I will show you my, um, my ones that I have made, okay? Okay, we can see you, Auntie. You can see me? Yes. I have chosen to make the honeycomb. Wow. That's an idea. So I made that honeycomb out of uh, cereal. Can you see that properly? Okay, so I made that uh, out of that cereal. Good, boys and girls. And uh, you can choose to make that as well. And look at the hexagon, which is the shape of the honeycomb. And I have also made uh, my own bee, and I just picked a stone and uh, then colored the stone. So that's my bee. It can sit in my garden. Ooh, ooh, I need to get my uh, hat on because and there's a bee in the house. I also made my own uh, okay. bee. Uh, oh, right? there, you there is mine. There is mine. I made that. Okay, so you can make your own as well, uh, boys and girls. Super. Okay. Super. That's it. Wow. And um, the last one is I will show you the just the the honeys that I showed you earlier. My favorite or the ones I chose is uh, the acacia honey, which I have there. And I also have the Scottish honey, which I have here. And I also have the manuka honey. So I'm going to ask uh, Nyane to help us here with just taste those and then he can tell us which one he likes, okay? Just quickly. So that will need to be super so quick, have, Nyane, um, because uh, we, are, we are way uh, uh, over time now, auntie. Okay, Nyane, so what do you think? Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's see him tasting. So he's tasting uh, manuka honey. And then he's gonna taste uh, this one with the honeycomb, all right? Oh, now that makes me so hungry. So this one is a honeycomb. Okay, just bite. Okay, so this one is the acacia honey, the one I showed you. Okay, and then we have uh, the Scottish one. Okay, which is now you better go carefully now. The heather honey. So you tell us. Okay, so he got manuka honey. Okay, so what's the veggie? Acacia honey and the heather honey. Which one do you like? I think my favorite was the manuka honey. Uh, ah. <clears throat> okay, we were hoping you were going to find... Uh, the Scottish honey, the heather honey, but uh, that uh, leads us to the end of the presentation. So boys and girls, we're gonna unmute you now and give Auntie a big round of applause just to appreciate um, what she has done in this presentation as we move on to our next presentation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.